Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Diego, your international video producer here in beautiful Colombia, South America. Now, you want to file a K-1 visa, but you don't know what to include in the K-1 visa so you can bring your fiancé to the United States and get married. Now, USCIS does not require that you fill out a cover sheet when you put your K-1 visa together. Put together a cover sheet, okay? Even though it's not required, USCIS folks are looking at documents all day, every day, five days a week, and their eyes are probably getting sore from looking at numbers and letters and names and addresses. So make your K-1 visa so easy for your immigration officer to look at it and review it that they can peruse through it quickly and move it on to the next level at the service center. So even though a cover sheet is not required, put together a cover sheet. So the cover sheet will say, Form I-129F, cover letter, petitioner. You're going to put your name, your address, your cell phone number, your email address, and you're going to address it to United States Department of Homeland Security, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, Attention, I-129F, 2501 South State Highway 121, Business Suite 400, Louisville, Texas, 75067. Now, I use this address to the Dallas lockbox, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm using FedEx or UPS. It's your decision. I'm not going to say which one I use, but I used a courier service to ship the fantastic visa package to the Dallas lockbox. Now, there's a different address if you use the U.S. Postal Service to mail your K-1 visa. Go to uscis.gov and type in address to mail K-1 visa and they'll tell you where to send it. Now, very important, on your cover sheet, put a date. Okay? Put the date. And then underneath the date, you're going to write nature of, nature of submission. I-129F submission. First document binder. Now this is in my case, okay, this may not pertain to you, but I had sent four binders in of a stuff for a year's relationship plus. First document binder, to whom it may concern. Enclosed, please find my form I-129F petition for K-1 visa for beneficiaries, and then you write their names in, and K-2 if they have a child. Next thing on the cover sheet. Contents include, contents include, number one, the first thing that goes in your K-1 visa package is the payment of $535 check made out to U.S. Department of Homeland Security, complete in its entirety, U.S. Department of Homeland Security. If you write the check out to USCIS or to... Uh, DEP, HL, or any abbreviation, your visa package will be sent back to you and your money will be sent back to you, cancelled out. And you have to start all over again. <laughs> so the first thing in your visa package is your cover letter. Then the second thing in your visa package is the check in an envelope, okay? And then put the envelope into one of these forms, into one of these binders right here. Hold on. So, you're going to put your cover letter in here. You're going to put a check for $535 in an envelope in a second document holder. Okay? You're going to fill out the E notification form, which is uh, so that the immigration folks can send you a text and tell you that they received your e immigration package at the lockbox. That way you're not sitting around wondering. So the next thing you're going to put in your visa package is the USCIS form I-129F. 
This will be third in line. First is the check. Second is the uh, e-notification form. And that document is G44. I'll put it here for you. The next form you're going to have is your I-129F filled out completely in its entirety. Now remember, this is information that you're writing in sequential order on your cover sheet. Okay? You're writing this information down on your cover sheet. Contents include payment, notification letter, USCIS Form I-129F. And then behind your USCIS Form 129F, you're going to have your visa passport photos with a receipt showing that they were taken within 30 days, okay, before you mail the package in. Visa photos have to be taken within 30 days of your fiancé or her children. She or he, your fiancé, will write her name or his name in its entirety on the back of the visa photo on each one. Two, you need two per person, okay. You need a visa photo for yourself, the petitioner, write your name on the back, and a visa photo for any children. Two visa photos per person. Two for me, two for my fiance, and two for her son. Okay? Now, you're going to have to fill out a form, or you're going to have to write, hand write, or, or type on a computer. I recommend you put it in a computer and type it. USCIS Form Supplemental Part 2 Question 34. Question 34 in the form I-129F will ask you, where did you meet your fiance for the first time? Where did you meet your fiance for the first time? Okay? You have to write a nice letter explaining this information. Now, I met my fiance for the very first time at the airport at El Dorado International Airport in Bogota. So I put in there, I met my fiance for the first time on this date, at this time, at this location. You could have met your fiance at a cafe, a cafe bar, or a, or a discotheque, or on the beach in whichever country it is you were visiting at the time. Just make sure you tell the truth and tell immigration where you met your person, met your fiance for the first time. First time meeting in person. Write a nice page. And about how romantic it was, romantic it was, and how you are so excited that you met this person. Okay. Now, the next form that you're going to include on your cover sheet. Remember, you're documenting this this information on a cover sheet is USCIS Form G three twenty five A biographic information. You, your fiance, your fiance's children must fill out and sign a biographic information sheet. This goes next in the visa package in this beautiful plastic sheet okay and uh it goes in and it goes on the cover sheet that you're putting together okay what comes after the uh, the biographic information sheet the second thing you put in your plastic binder is uscis form i-134 which is the affidavit of support plus an additional letter which i included for myself if you want to add any more information Okay, now if you are a U.S. citizen, okay, you need to put in the visa package a copy of your passport. All right, a copy of your passport and or your birth certificate, and if it, and if it's in a foreign language, get it translated into that into English. And I recommend using the Spanish group. So the next thing you're going to have in your visa package is proof of your U.S. citizenship. Now you could be a naturalized American. If you are a naturalized American, include in your pretty sheet here, include in here uh, your naturalization certificate. Made a copy of it. Okay. Now, the next thing you're going to put in your visa package is your fiancé's passport, a copy of her biographic page or his biographic page. This is the face and the signature. You don't need a copy of the entire passport, ladies and gentlemen. Don't do Immigration have got enough to do without flipping through empty pages of your passport. The biographic page only. So you put a copy in your beautiful sheet, in your, in your, in your holder here, a copy of your passport, a copy behind it of your fiancé's passport, and then continue with any of her children or his children. Now... 
My fiance is from Venezuela and she is a legal resident of Colombia. So the next thing I put in my K-1 visa package was a copy of her legal residency ID card, her cedular, her green card, I guess you'd call it, to live and reside in Colombia. If you are sending a K-1 package in for somebody who is from Ecuador and living in, uh, let's say, Colombia, and that person is not a legal resident of Colombia, immigration will block that package and send it back to you. So if you are, uh, because Venezuela does not have any uh, embassy ties to the U.S. government, my fiance will be processing her visa through the U.S. embassy in Colombia, but she had to be a legal resident of Colombia. Okay. The next thing that you put in your beautiful visa package is a letter certifying your intent to marry the petitioner, me, and the beneficiary, my fiance. A letter of intent to marry. So I wrote a beautiful letter of intent to marry in English. It was beautiful. Why do I want to marry this person? Could because you are in love with this person. Make it strong. And then sign it and date it. If you do not sign the letter of intent to marry your fiance and date it, your entire visa package will be sent back to you, okay, because it's not complete. Now, your fiance, in my case, my fiance is from Venezuela, so she wants to marry me. She loves me just as much as I love her. So she wrote her letter of intent to marry in Spanish, okay, in her native language. Don't you write it for her. Don't you write her letter of intent to marry in English if she's from a foreign country and then have her sign it. Don't do that. That's not good. Have her write it in her native language on a computer. Have her sign it and date it. Then take it to a notary in her country of residence. Get it notari notarized. Then use the Spanish group and translate her letter of intent to marry you into English and include all this in separate binders in your K-1 visa package, okay? Make sure you include it on your uh, cover letter, which you're putting together. The next thing that goes on the cover letter, you're going to write down and in the order precedent in your K-1 visa package is a copy of her, of her uh, birth certificate or his birth certificate, or any children that she may have or he may have. If it's in a foreign language, translate the document, the birth certificate, into English. So you're going to have her birth certificate in Spanish. Behind it, her birth certificate translated into English, or his birth certificate. And then in the next page, it's going to be a letter of certification from a translation company. I recommend the Spanish group in California saying this is a true certification. Okay, now, if any, uh, if, your, if your fiance was married before and his or her husband died, passed away, get a copy of the death certificate from that country and then translate it into English and include that in your visa package and include it on the cover sheet which you are so diligently putting together. Okay, now, get a copy of a police certificate. Now, my fiance is from Venezuela, living in Colombia, so she went on the computer and printed up a police certificate using her ID from Venezuela, um, that, and got a police certificate, and then she went on the computer in our apartment in Bogota, and she printed a copy of this of the police certificate from Colombia using her Colombian cedular ID number so she has two police certificates <laughs> I then took a picture of them with my cell phone and I sent them to the Spanish group in California and they within 24 hours or no, within two days they had translated them both into English with a letter of certification okay so get your police certificates from every country your fiance lived in Get them translated into English and put them separately in your visa package next in line and include it on your cover sheet. Okay. Now my fiance has a college degree. 
So I got a certified foreign credential evaluation of her college, to, uh, of her um, university studies from the Spanish group. Okay, she she went to to university in Venezuela, and she has a degree in tax accounting. Okay, equivalent to the United States. So I got it accredited. I got it translated into English, and I included it in the little document holder in the visa package. Immigration is very interested in your fiance's education and qualifications. If your fiance went to a trade school, if your fiance uh, has a degree uh, in underwater basket weaving, it doesn't matter. Include it in the visa package and write it down on the cover sheet so the immigration officer can go through your documents and go and use your cover sheet as a reference. Okay? Now, if you met your fiance on a on a dating site like Colombian Cupid or Thai Cupid or Filipino Cupid, whatever, it's good, no problem. It's a good way to find find somebody. But make sure that you print, okay, the terms of service from the Colombian Cupid website and include it here in your uh, visa package and include it on your cover letter because you have to make sure that immigration understand that if you just write that you met your fiance online, immigration will send you an RFE requesting further evidence on where did you meet your fiance online? What website? Was it an IMB, an international marriage broker? Okay, if you met your fiance through an international marriage broker, there's, all, there's other hoops you have to jump through. But if you met your fiance at Colombian Cupid, for me, okay, let's say Colombian Cupid, um, print the terms of service of Colombian Cupid, include it in here, because in that terms of service, it clearly states that Colombian Cupid is not an international marriage broker. Okay? Now, the next thing you want to include in your visa package and put them in your, in your document holders is proof of having met your fiancé in person. Or, and her children. And her family. And her friends. Okay? So you're going to need dozens and dozens of these document holders filled up with how you met your fiance in person. Now you want to have to be in the relationship at least one year. You need to make at least two trips to visit your fiance, at least two at a minimum, and you need to live with this person for at least six months so you know who this person is. So you're going to have a thick wad of these filled out of proof of you have met your fiance in person. Boarding passes, receipts at restaurants, receipts at the supermarket. Uh, let's, uh, let's suppose in, uh, you're paying the rent, you're helping out with the rent for your fiance's apartment. And your name is on the receipt, the Aguila in, in Colombia, for the rent receipt. Include it in your proof of having met in person. 20 to 30 photographs need to be included in this visa package. Not just selfies. Oh, look how pretty. No. no. Photos with family, with friends. Okay? Not selfies, selfies, selfies. Immigration knows that you have met your fiance. Okay? And selfies ain't going to cut it. Immigration wants to know, is your relationship real? Is it for real, ladies and gentlemen? And it is for real. You love your wife. You love this lady. You love this man. So you're going to have 30, maybe 40 photos of you together with family and friends. Okay? Over a one-year period. Okay? Right? If you're with 10 of her friends in the picture, write down the names. You can handwrite it. The names of her friends. Esther, 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 Esther. And what date? And then write the date in. If you can get your camera to date stamp the picture for you, okay, great. If you can't, don't worry. Write the date down on the, on the photograph. Okay? Wedding plans in process. That goes next on your cover sheet. Include the wedding plans you have in process. Okay? Have you found a church? 
Have you found a notary? Um, do you know where you're going to get married? Do you know who the guests are? Now, I'm not saying you have to pay for your wedding before you, before you get your immigration K-1 visa approved, but you need to submit a bunch of evidence in these beautiful little document holders showing your intent to get married. Okay? You can have a Facebook public notification of your, of your engagement. Have photos of your engagement party with all her friends at the apartment in whichever country it is. Okay? H have your best man pick out your best man or best woman and have them write a letter of intent. Okay? An affidavit that, yes, I am indeed the best man or best woman for this wedding. I have known this person for X amount of years and I am aware of this relationship that has been in process for a year plus. I, and fill out this page letter, have your best man or best woman sign it, okay, it doesn't cost any money, and make sure they date it, include it on the cover sheet, and include it in the K-1 visa in a beautiful binder, okay? Now, you don't have to include an engagement ring photo or an engagement ring receipt in the visa package, but I'm telling you, to buy an engagement ring for your fiance, keep a copy of the receipt and include it in your visa package. Get a nice big blown up picture of the beautiful ring that you bought your fiance and then put that in this and then flip it flip this around and put the receipt for the engagement ring behind it. Include it. It's not required, but I'm telling you to include it, okay? As a, just trust me. Okay? Now, if you are retired from the military, or if you have Social Security, or if you have a job, you need to get a letter from either the Social Security office, a letter from the, uh, the Defense Finance and Accounting Service who pay you your, your military retirement, or a letter from your boss, <clears throat> have, have it signed, the most current run, run, and include it in your beautiful document holder. Um, which you're going to send to immigration. Now, if you have a real estate license, if you have a, an if you are an attorney and you have a lawyer license, if you are an accountant and you have certifications, include all you can to show how qualified and how much income you are going to be able to take care of your future family in the United States. Okay. Make sure immigration is fully confident that you are going to take care of your family. Um, if you are sending Western Union money to your fiance once a week, once a month, twice a month while you're in the United States, because remember, you're, you're going to live with this person for at least six months before you submit this package. But while you're in the United States, send her money. Send him some money if they, if they ask for it, if they need it. And keep the Western Union receipts, and then take them to a beautiful to a white piece of paper, and then slide that into a document holder. So if you have 15 months or 20 months worth of Western Union receipts, include every single one of them in your visa package, and highlight on the Western Union receipt your name, your fiance's name, and the amount that you sent, so immigration can see it. Immigration look at documents all day long, ladies and gentlemen, so make it easy for them. Make it easy for them. Highlight stuff you want their eyes to go to so they don't have to hunt through the document with their eyes. Their eyes are tired, okay? Make it easy for the immigration folks, okay? Next, you're going to put your tax return in, your latest tax return, in a beautiful document holder and include it on the cover sheet. My tax return, year 2021, 2022, whatever. Get 12 bank statements at a minimum, 15 bank statements, and a letter if you want from your bank saying how long you've been a member of this bank. Go to the bank and say, I need a letter showing how much money I deposited in my bank for the last year. But with my case, I just, print, I just included 12 months worth of bank statements. On the cover sheet, it says, bank statements from my bank. If you own your house or if you're renting your, or if, if you own your house or if you're paying a mortgage on your house, go to a real estate appraiser or go like to Zillow.com and print 
out the current market value of your property, whether you own it outright or whether you have a mortgage on it, it's not important. Print out a copy of your house where you live and its value, okay? Including property tax, your property taxes. So every November you get hit with property taxes, which I call my rent to the government to live in my house. Print it so it can put your name to this property. This tells immigration that your fiance is coming to a house that is secure. You're not going to be living in a tent on the beach in Hawaii. Okay, you're going to be living in this house which belongs to you. And here's the evidence. Put that information in your document binder, include it on the cover sheet, and put it in your visa package. Um, if you have to write any letters of explanation, let's supposing that you were married before and you divorced your, your, uh, your previous spouse and she was from another country and you went through this whole K-1 visa before, you only get two chances on this. Two, you're only allowed two K-1 visas and I'll make a video about that. But make sure you write a letter of, of explanation about your previous ex-wife who you brought to this country on a K-1 visa. So you brought somebody here, you got married, it didn't work out, oh ho, boo hoo. Okay, don't have a pity party. Get the divorce done and finalized, get everything sorted out, and then go back to the country you found this your first wife and find a second person. Okay, no pity parties. All right, no pity parties. But you have to explain what happened to immigration. All right? So write a letter of explanation. Yeah, I was married to this person and she got an approved K-1 visa and blah, 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 blah. Okay. And include that on the cover sheet and include all that information in your K-1 visa. Um, if you have been divorced in the past, once, twice, three times, go to the courthouse. Don't print this stuff online because it will get rejected. Okay, you'll get an RFE, request for further evidence. You have to go to the courthouse, print and get a notarized copy in person of your divorce decrees and include them in your K-1 visa package. Okay, and any other information that you find pertinent and put it on the cover sheet. You cannot submit a K-1 visa if you are in process of getting a divorce, if it's not finalized. In, if in two weeks you're going to have your court date for your final divorce decree, okay, you cannot send your K-1 visa to immigration because you're still in process of a divorce. Don't do it. It will, get, it will be rejected. Or in the future, if you, go to the, if you make it to the embassy interview and then you bring your divorce papers with you, which are two weeks past when your, your visa was approved, you're gonna be, your, your fiancé will be blocked from coming to the United States because you were processing a visa before you were divorced from your first wife or second husband or whatever. Make sure you are fully able and capable of getting married and you have divorce papers from the courthouse notarized and signed by a court, a point, uh, by a clerk and include it in your K-1 visa package and include it on your uh, cover sheet. If you have a Facebook account, print it, put it in your visa package. If your fiance has a Facebook account, account, print her profile, print the Facebook profile, put it in behind yours in your visa package included on the cover sheet. You have to have a binder of at least one year minimum of proof of your ongoing relationship. Emails, WhatsApp chats, Yahoo Messenger chats, letters, handwritten letters. Have a minimum of a year. If you're, on, if you're in WhatsApp chatting back and forth and this is the application for WhatsApp, I recommend you get it because it's a fantastic way to document your communication with your fiance. Get this app and use it to communicate with your fiance at the end of the day. Print, print, print all your communication for at least a year. Put them in these beautiful document holders and on your cover sheet, you're going to put section B, second and third wide binder, or third, fourth, however many binders it is, proof of ongoing relationship with my fiance and her name. 
evidence of meeting in person from whenever to whenever, a minimum of one year. Message communications between your fiance and yourself in WhatsApp, Yahoo Messenger, wherever. Print, print, print for one year. So you're going to have a minimum of at least 300 printed sheets of communication at a minimum. Okay? And then you're going to put at the end of your cover sheet, you're going to write copies of documents are exact photocopies of unaltered documents and I understand that I may be required to submit the original documents to an immigration or consular officer at a later date. And that's the last statement that you put on your cover sheet. That's the last part of the statement. Okay? You put the date, you put very respectfully, and you sign it. If you, whatever you submit to immigration, whatever letters you write, whatever you include as separate information, you date it and you sign it and you address it to United States Department of Homeland Security, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, attention I-129F, and then the address where you mail this package to. Okay? So, when your fiancé writes a letter of intent to get married, she will put letter of intent to get married to U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, or, or actually, correction, to United States Department of Homeland Security, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, attention I-129F. That will be her first part of her intention to get married statement letter. Okay? When I write mine, the same thing. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you put a cover letter together for your fiance. It's not required. It's not, it's not going to block your visa from being processed, but you want to make the immigration officer's job as easy as possible. The immigration officer needs to flip through your visa package quickly and efficiently. They must be able to pull the documents out of very quickly for processing. And then that way, the stronger your immigration package, the more easy it is for the immigration officer to review it. And the more information you include, put it on the cover sheet so the immigration officer can go through as a check guide this, 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 this. He's flipping through or she's flipping through this, this, this. Okay, boom, you're done. First is the paycheck, $535, $535. And you will find out, if you follow this advice, your immigration package will go on to the next step at the service center quickly, efficiently, and your visa package will be approved or not approved, depending, much more quicker than if you put together a slop, sloppy, quick, uh, dis disorganized piece of garbage package. Put your visa to package together professionally, strong, and make it easy for the immigration officer to read your stuff Go through the paperwork and go to the next step. This is Diego, your international video producer here in beautiful Colombia, South America. And I will see you in Colombia. <laughs>